Roberto, what's up, brother? What's up, brother? How are you? Good, man. Long Thanks for having us back. Yeah, yeah, anytime. It's been a while. Yep. It's been like a year now. It's It's been... Has it been that long? I think so. Dang. <laughs> and uh, this place is packed with all sorts of fun goodies, so I cannot wait to go through. But the reason we're here is for this thing. It's so beautiful on the lift, and god dang, it's clean. This is, this is a clean example, for sure. For sure. We put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in this one. Yeah, man, it's so cool. Well, now that you have it up in the air, let's let's take a look at the underside. It looks sure. to I mean, be like there's a starting with just the basics of basics. Essentially, it's just a full roundup restoration. This was down to a rotisserie um, level as far as teardown is concerned. Every all the rust was taken off. A couple panels were popped off. Rust was removed, and then the whole car was then uh, I guess they call it lizard skin, which is like a almost like a rhino line kind of thing. But it's it's it, it kind of wicks away heat. It, it helps with noise stuff like that whole car has been sealed with fat. It probably does a lot for this old car. It does, it does. Actually, when we drive it later, you're gonna be really impressed with just how little noise is in the cabin compared to most cars of this age, you know? Um, especially stuff like this with like harder mounts and stuff. Um, and these cars are so light that right. the, the little bit of weight that it adds, I'm sure. It helps, this car yeah. feels really nice in the road. It's, it, you, you'll, you'll see, it's really surprising. Um, next step after that was suspension, a company from uh, California called Techno Toy Tuning hooked this up. So they actually make this whole suspension package for this car. Um, and it lets you actually, like for, for the rear end at least, it lets you pick the diff you want or how you want to do it. This is just uh, an S14, uh, uh, a viscous LSD we put nice. in, which is more than enough for this car, obviously. Yeah, this is, yeah, yeah. suspension bits are really sweet. Yeah. Same thing for the front. Um, they, it already comes preset to run the Willwood stop brake kit. Um, it, we, we, you know, obviously we upgraded the master cylinders and everything, and it's just a really solid setup for the car. Handles well, super easy to adjust, super easy to align. And we got it. We I think it took me only two trips to line rack and dial it in, which is pretty rare. If you if you're familiar with this stuff, you never get it right on the first try. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of driving and, and calculating to make sure everything's right, and it was super easy to get it dialed in. Um, yeah, man. And I see you guys oval the exhaust here, which is kind of cool. Is that for clearance? Yeah, yeah. So the you know the, the thought with this car, obviously RB26 swap. I guess we'll get to that in a little bit, but you know, um, we needed at least a three-inch exhaust. Um, we wanted to flow about five six hundred horsepower through it, so three inches more than enough, but. Um, we kind of ran into an issue when we started to start snaking it through. Uh, so this is actually an R34 GTT transmission. Um, and we just didn't have the room. This exhaust was going to probably sit down here. So the solution was, I came up with this little conversion. So we're, you know, perfectly round three inch starting at the turbo. We convert to oval. The oval carries through the whole flat section of the car. And then over here, when we get some room, we go back to round exhaust, whatever you want to call it. And then out the back. Yeah, nice. I love how you guys did the muffler. Looks really like factory style, you know? That was, like, that was the idea. Yeah. yeah, just to make it look like it always belonged there. Yeah. And that was the whole thing with the car. Like when we, go to, when we go to the engine bay, you'll see the same thing. It was just, what, how can we make it look like this was always here, you know? Look at that, man. Dude, you guys killed it. Yeah, no, like, like I said, the idea was it looks just like it make belongs it, there. Like it belongs there. That was the <laughs> idea. As long as I, I keep getting that comment, I'm happy. Because that was literally the idea the whole time. It's just to make everything flow real well make it look like everything at some point could have actually just been there. So the engine's kind of our typical stock crank formula. So it's CB pistons, manly rods, and I, I usually like to put them in like the nine, nine and a half um, compression ratio range. Um, I like that for cars that are just gonna run 85. Um, if we're gonna run 90, 93, I'll typically just bring them down to stock. But in this case, this one's nine to one. Uh, it just you know gives the engine a little more balls. It wants to move out of its way a little faster. Um, at TEC did all the work always the ceiling machine shop we use and uh, we took a couple precautions with it to just give us some of the Achilles heels so it's an N1 oil pump with billet gears from PRP uh, we have a uh, PRP uh, what's it called trigger kit the crank trigger kit yeah. yep crank trigger kit that's a must if not you're just gonna have wandering timing all the time it's for tuning it's a nightmare um, you can't see it but there's also an R35 uh, PRP coil kit in there uh, so moving to the turbo side it's a pretty basic setup. It's just a Garrett G35. Um, with, th with this car, like I think we spoke before, um, I, we weren't trying to get this crazy spooling monster that just builds way too much torque way too fast. Um, so we picked this turbo because it lets us do a really smooth power curve and it lets us just slowly ramp it in and just make sure that we didn't have any wild times on the road, um, especially for the customer because he's not super used to these kind of cars. 
He wanted something that he could handle and he felt comfortable driving. And we felt this was the perfect package for it. I absolutely love that you guys didn't like 2J swap it or something. And you, you know, you stayed true to the Nissan roots, you know, you don't, you, you see them all the time. LS swapped, yep. 2J swapped, you know, so this is, this is really special, man. I cannot wait to go for a ride in this thing. It probably sounds amazing. Yeah, let me turn it on. That interior is immaculate. Dude, it smells like a brand new car in here. It is. <laughs> wow. Dude, that sounds so good. Yeah. At first, we didn't have the muffler in the back, so it was a little obnoxious, and then we put this on, and it was, but now this is perfect. It has the perfect amount of aggression. You guys, look at this car. That doesn't make you smile. Right. I don't know, man. <laughs> you want to hear my favorite part? What's that? <laughs> is, is that? Is it's that AC? Yeah. Is that AC in this thing? <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Dude, these guys are treating me right today. They they come and and they're ready with AC because it's hot. It's yeah. about 110 degrees yeah, today. I, I wouldn't do it again with AC. <laughs> so the whole interior is been redone. Um, I believe the dash is an aftermarket unit um, and everything else has just been pretty much reupholstered. Um, the whole car has been completely rewired. Uh, the only factory wires left are the pigtail for the headlight stock. Wow. So everything else in the car is a complete brand new wire. Um, computer and part of the car are controlled by a Haltech ECU. Uh, it's all hidden down here mixed in with the sound system. And then what? And then we have our system. Let's check that out. Yeah, so you can kind of see the wires back there, but the ECU board and everything's back there. And yeah, then back see. here is actually our vintage air um, evaporator core, and that's that's how we set up the AC. Um, but that's it. I mean, it's, it's an old car, so it's simple. It's, it's just a lot of work. Incredibly clean, man. Yeah. I mean, these things, uh, the interior in the Datsuns and in, in this this specific chassis, they deteriorate so much. Really quick. And yeah. a lot of them, even though you see like. People like paint them and stuff, but the interiors are usually like pretty rough yep. in these things. So to see one in this condition, it's, man, I'm smiling ear to ear. Yeah, this is and awesome. And there's a couple of little like hidden gems in it that I just don't know the full history on, but uh, Jay, the owner, he'll, uh, he'll run you through in a bit. Definitely, man. Jay, it's great to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So this is your baby. Yeah, this is my uh, 1971 Datsun 240Z. So uh, give us a little of the history. I imagine it didn't always look this way because the, the Zs are usually pretty rough. Yeah, so I've been interested in the car for a long time and uh, about four years ago I decided to buy one and uh, got a hold of a car in Tupelo, Mississippi where I talked to the owner who told me that the car was in great condition, the engine worked perfectly and there was not a single bit of rust on it. And so I had it, I bought it and had it brought down to South Florida here and where we found out the engine was seized and the car was completely rusted out and at that point I decided that it's time to just take this down to a ground up restoration and do it right and on a rotisserie, uh, full complete uh, metal work and from the ground up restoration and so the, the goal was really to make it look as stock as possible uh, except for the engine which needed to be upgraded to an RB26 and uh, this is where we're at with it now. And it's it's a beautiful car, man. I gotta say, I've seen a lot of the Z's, and I, I don't think I've ever seen one in person in this condition. I mean, you guys absolutely knocked it out of the park with this. Yeah. So the goal was really to make it look like brand new. Uh, everything in the car is virtually new again. It and smells new. It, yeah. The, the car literally, I put my head in here. I'm like, yeah. Oh, it smells so like a new car. This, the, the, the seats came with uh, you know uh, with uh, they were plastic looking leather, and so right now it's it's all Napa leather with red stitching, and to look like a stock car. Uh, everything in it is completely new or been refurbished if you can't find it and so it was really exciting it took just about four years to do it and wow. now it's complete and uh, you know it's got air conditioning in it and it's got the comforts of, of, of a new car it drives like a new car smells like a new car it gets That's a little fun. crazy it's That's fun, fun. it's yeah. fun absolutely man oh look at that back there yeah so we have a kind of a hidden sound system back here too just done by Manny Auto Sound he does all the sound systems for us um, so essentially you can put your grocery back here, but we have two hidden. What? 
Yo, that's awesome. Yeah, so there's a custom box inter integrated into where the, <laughs> the uh, what's it called, the spare tire well was. We try to keep it as vintage as possible sure. just to make sure that, you know, it, it, it represents itself well yep. for what it is. Just a clean, older car that we just, what's it called, a resto mod, I guess is what they yeah. right? Yeah, sure. you know, it's an older car with just everything been updated to, to be more modern and have all the creature function, creature functions of a modern car. Sure, man. All right, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to take this thing for a rip. You, go. you wanna go? Yeah. All right, guys, so we're going for a spin in the RB26 240.
been many Z's, so I've maybe been in a couple, and they've all made probably way too much horsepower than they should be for that chassis. Uh, You've never been in a stock one? And, and I've, I've never been in a, in a stock one. They make all of, what, 100 It is the most underwhelming car that you'll ever drive. <laughs> Yo, what's up, brother? What's going on? Javier, nice I'm to meet you. Gabe, nice to meet you, What's man. up, Gabe? Oh, Dude, this thing is immaculate. This <laughs> incredibly clean. I mean, we've seen clean R33s, but <laughs> for me, this takes it to another level. I'm trying Jeez. to take the cake. That's what I'm trying to do. So, <laughs> it took a long time, honestly. Um, it, it was just... Two and a half years, I think I've owned it, and there's not a nut, bolt, harness, anything on this car that hasn't been taken apart. So everything. Wow, man. And this uh, is what you get. Take yeah. A, take a look at the engine bay here. This thing is ultra clean, man. It looks kind of like a, I guess. Give me the details, but it seems like it's like a restoration build. There's no big single, you know. So so what's I guess what's the rundown and. Yeah, I call it a resto mod. Um, it's it. I didn't want to go big single. Uh, I really wanted to stay true to like the GTR kind of heritage. The whole car is really built with a early 2000s feel. You can look, you know, on the exterior wise. And I wanted to make sure the engine kind of matched that, but with modern details. So uh, modern turbos, you know, we're on corn. Um, some of the some of the newer HKS items, things like that. And uh, fully built bottom end. So make 600 wheel. It was done here at RAV. That's awesome. Yeah, 600 yeah. is, I'd say, is a really good sweet spot for these things because they they love to live at that at, at that range and uh, yeah. it'll be it'll definitely be more reliable, but they're an uh, absolute blast at that level too. That's what I wanted. Like, I want it to be reliable so I can be in traffic and, and you know, still deal with the normal clutch. So, you know, Roberto here really kind of picked the parts that I think I needed to do and it, and it came together really nicely. So I heard there's quite a story with this car. Yeah, <laughs> so... Um, I kind of knew I was I was going to leave England soon. I was living in England designing F1 cars uh, for Mercedes. Des designing F1 cars. That's right. <laughs> I'm gonna I want to pause you there. <laughs> we'll stop. Designing F1 cars. <laughs> what? Yeah, six years at Mercedes AMG F1 team. Uh, no was, way. Yeah, one of two Americans there. So I was I was in England and uh, outside of Oxford. And, um, you know, in England, everything's right hand drive. So you see some cool cars pop up here and there. And, and I always had in the back of my head, I was like, you know, I'm gonna go back to the States at some point. Let me go look for a GTR. You know, I wasn't, wasn't making a terrible amount of money, but I was looking and my coworkers were like, hey, there's this one up in Scotland. We should go check it out. I caught a flight up there. This was the most <laughs> disgusting car you've ever seen in your life. I didn't know if the engine was blown or not. And I'm like, all right, I'll take it. Gave him cash. Sent the guy to pick up the car. It was just a really weird transaction, but got the car. When I owned it, I only drove it about a quarter mile before I stuck it on the boat and brought it here. Wow. So yeah, I had no clue like what to expect at that point. <laughs> I was like, shit, man. That's wild, man. Yeah. So quite crazy. It got here, it had a blown motor actually. And uh, that's what started this chaos of a build really. And I just said, let's send it. Like, and it snowballed everything. from there. Just because snowballed. Th this is right here, the absolute last thing from a dumpster fire that's... <laughs> that like yeah. i couldn't Im i couldn't imagine <laughs> that this car was a heap but because it, dude it's it's wild it's wildly clean i put it on a rotisserie uh before it left england in the middle of the pandemic um because it had some rust that needed repairing so I did the strut tops in england did an old underbody resto uh which was really came out really well 
and that's work you can't get done here in the US. So I was like, I knew if I was gonna buy, let's say a less than perfect GTR, I had to make sure it was amazing before I put it in the container and moved back. Sure. So that really, that's what started that's awesome. it. So, so my time at Mercedes, you know, um, I did design all over the car, uh, various, everything basically but suspension and, and brakes, I touched at some point. And uh, I tried to bring kind of like those, um, uh, those very methodical design practices that I learned at work into what I did on this car. I mean, even the wheels, I had the centers painted at the paint shop. That's Mercedes AMG F1 no way. Silver. Really? Yeah. And shout out to Andrew Moody, he painted the centers for me. I, <laughs> Yeah, I was like, you know, on a weekend, you bring them in, you're like, hey, can you can you stick these in the paint booth, you know, with the next set of that's bodywork? That's so awesome. Pick the color and, it, yeah, they just spray them up for me. So, yeah, Thank that's you. my, uh, my uh, I guess, token that I brought home from the team. So That's so cool, brother. Yeah, yeah, cool stuff. Huh? All right, guys, we're going for a spin in Gabe's R33. Dude, this thing is clean. I love the steering wheel. Thanks, man. Renown. I think they're from San Francisco, actually. So we're going to go out, get some cool sounds, make a couple rips. See what this thing's about. See with cars like this. <laughs> oh my god, instant torque, man. It fucking goes, yeah. Instant torque. Love it. Now this is this isn't the, the usual like TRC 1500 horsepower this or whatever it is. <laughs> but <laughs> It still moves, right? <laughs> it moves. So th this is the experience you want in an R33. That's it. <laughs> okay. the, um, and I, <laughs> My man, dude, this is it. Is this is it. Fun, Not only is it a looker, but this thing, this thing pulls, man. It does, and it's exactly what I wanted. I didn't want any more than 600. I thought like it would just be insane on the street. You know, stop and go traffic, you have a crazy cam. This is perfect street level. That's it. Yeah. It just starts up when I need it, drives when I need it, and, and it's fun when I want it. Yeah. Go fast, so. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. Dude, thank you so much for taking me for a spin, man. Man, this, no problem. This is, this is like, you built a perfect street GTR, brother. I, I appreciate it. That was the goal. Thanks yeah, so man. much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I've seen this car before and I know it's incredibly fast. It's been like something like 280 miles an hour, right? Yeah, or something. 80 something, right, yeah. <laughs> like something absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Um, you yeah, know, we've just been tasked. It's, I don't know if it's a secret or not, but it's going for the next level. So we've just been tasked with just shaking the car down, making sure everything works, something's gonna have an issue. We just redid the fuel system on it. Um, we made some tweaks to the oiling system. It has daily engineering uh, dry sump and some of the pressures weren't where I like it to be. So we. Move some stuff around, got a bunch of wiring redone, a bunch of plumbing redone, just, just prepping the car. You know, this is like an ongoing build for them, so we're just kind of helping out, get it ready for the next time that it's, you know, going to go perform. This thing is wild, man. It's very wild. I mean, look at it, there's so much going on here. Yeah. We got two low, huge turbos hanging off the back here. Yeah. This thing all in. 1400 horsepower. Yeah, low boost 1400, all in's probably 2000, 2500, yeah. something like that, right? Or? Yeah, we just, we just actually converted to 85. It, this car always was on, on race gas. So now it's actually just on, you know, it's not pump 85, I forgot what brand he's running, but um, either way, pure 85 at this Man, point. this thing is insane. Johnny Bummer, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This thing is wild. Yeah, he's got that, uh, that runway deal out there, but like NASA yeah. runway or something like that, yeah. right? Like, yeah, they go out and they put these cars to the limit. They just sit there at wide open throttle for however long it takes yeah. to make it, you know, to whatever mile an hour they want to hit. It's just really so cool, really sketchy. We're gonna see if he <laughs> he takes us for a little ride along one of these things. Yeah. I remember this car. We featured yep. this. It's got to be two, three years ago or more something, than or more than that. More than that wow, three, uh, probably four years. Four years now. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's been down for two years. A little yeah, more, it's actually. looking pretty wild, man. It's a complete complete revision. So we've taken every wire in the engine bay that we didn't need up here. It's all in the back now. Um, it's just it's a completely different manifold. Same turbo, but we redid a lot of the plumbing, a lot of the setup, added EGTs, deleted the AC lines, so to speak, or ran them on the outside now. So there's no more AC lines in the engine bay. Yeah. Um, really taking a lot of care with everything. Yes. Well, this Man, is, once, it's all carbon fiber under here. Yeah. One, yeah dude, once so, this is all yeah. polished up, I know 
uh, Carlos is uh, meticulous, yeah, to say the least. This car has always sounded just yeah. nasty. The exhaust is different too. Yeah. So we did a little weird thing and uh, it's, it's paying off. It sounds fantastic. We took it for a spin and it just sounds like what a plane landing. What did you guys do? So we, it had a, an HKS um, TI, whatever they call the big titanium tip one. We actually took the guts out of it. Oh, nice. Most people just put a pipe through it, so we just took the, guy, the guts out of it. So it, it's kind of acting like a big resonator at the yeah, back, yeah, but yeah. it's so close to the end. It, it does this cool sound. Yeah. It sounds ridiculous. Yeah, I'll rev it for you. It sounds wicked, bro. Yeah, the, the turbo is a lot louder now. So, yeah. Coming soon to a car show near you, I guess. Yeah, we'll get there eventually.